Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Pathfinder Kingmaker. I'm your host, Colors Fade. It's episode 87, and we're going to rank some stuff up before the next ball top. Here's where we're at. This is the thing I was looking for. You have to increase the rank of the kingdom stats 40 times in order to get that, uh, what do you want to call it? It's a training thing that's going to allow you to reduce ranking up from 14 days to seven. I thought we already had it and achieved it, but I guess not. So we need to rank up things. So Grand Diplomat, we're going to rank her up. We're going to see what events there are. There's nothing going on. These guys have nine days. So we're going to rank up the Grand Diplomat. And there it's 40 times. Okay. So that was the last one we had to do. Now we should finally get this. It's a very important stat. Spider invasion got taken care of. He failed the morning after and it killed us in a lot of things. So, is this under other or is it under training? Or is it under rank up? Or some other project? Faster development. This is it. 14 days to solve and 100 BP. So, let's go up here because some people auto assign themselves to things that... I don't know why this is happening. Can't make sense of that part. Cause... All right. So we got a competition problem. A war of shadows. Ekin, you have a 40% chance. I'll give you a 65% chance. The full-blooded Keston. Okay, I can do Keston or Harem on that one. I can do a Harem or Her on that one. These are opportunities. Okay. So who has to do this project? It's, oh, Jubiloster, Tristan. Okay, let's do Tristan. I think this is going to be an immediate one, though. So let's do this. Keston, you can do this. You have a 50% chance. We're going to make it 75. Frey Zisiphus, we're going to put you on it. Spend a point for 85. Runaways is an opportunity. Opportunity to steal. Opportunity. Opportunity slum dwellers. Power of blood. What's this? Jubilost, you have a chance to do this one. It's an opportunity. It's nine days to solve. Okay, you can do that one. This is an opportunity competition. Sure, start that event. Runaways, opportunity. Wait a minute. Who's doing the project? He is, okay. So you can do this. You have a 55% chance, sure. You guys are all stuck with that. I'm just trying to see if I can fill all these up before I go. Okay, so now we check this. Door to Nowhere. Bring Willerson's Gunderson's book to Jubilost. And then it should be, what is it? Should curse part five. 33 days. Okay. So rank up. Project right here. Oh, and we just need 14 days. Okay, hold on then. Trading with Resta. I need to do... I need... F How many days is that? 14 days for this project? Yeah, I need to rank someone up though. Okay, who's doing... He's doing a problem. He's doing a problem. Problem. Opportunity. Jubilost. Jubilost. Ragongar. Or Octavia. Jubilost, Ragonger, or Octavia. Jubilost. Okay, let's get Jubilost back. Jubilost. Let's go. 14 days. All right, he's successful on that. Attack from Bald Hop is expected in two weeks. She failed the runaways. He failed the competition. Faster rank ups, reducing time by half. That's what we like to see. Okay. Now, Bald Hop is in two. Strengthen Mega Varn skills. Okay. Lindsay, you should probably do that. Unless something else is going on here. Treasure request for you. Okay, let's do this. Let's go see everybody in the throne room and then we'll head to Baldtop. 
Your Highness, the ambassador of the trade union in Daggermark has arrived at your court. The union is asking for permission to trade on our domain, and they are willing to pay a generous fee. It's worth considering who we are dealing with. In Daggermark, your power and privilege depend directly upon the weight of your coin purse, whereas leaders of other countries are often surreptitiously act as profiteers and bandits. It's through profiteering and banditry that rulers in Daggermark rise to power, and to be clear, the city is thriving. I often hear praise of the intelligence and business acumen of Daggermark citizens, but never any praise of their honesty or ethical perspective. It's up to you to decide who you make deals with, but I don't mind playing this little business game we've been offered. Choice effects. Okay, trade agreement with Daggermark. Loyalty plus five. Let them go. I trust your advice. I will grant our consent. Okay, sure. If you want to play a little game with them, play a little game with them. Oh my. Bringing the golem in. I brought a giant ass golem. Help us. Help us. Okay. That's what you got to say for yourself, giant golem. You need help? How do you like that? Again, someone needs our help. And again, it has to do with golems. Does any of this seem familiar? Those simpletons from Skaggy clan must have dug up something else and gotten themselves in trouble again. The priest's remarks are punctuated by a terrible clanging sound as the golem collapses on the floor in pieces. And I warned them they were wooing death. I warned them. Let's return to that little fortress that they couldn't get inside and see what happens this time. Yes, we'll go check on them. Don't go without me. I won't. You'll have your chance to ruin something again. Visit Irulin. Okay. Dragon says, Greetings, your highness. By tradition, is a worthy... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have come to honor this tradition. Gives us tempest. Okay. Dragon gave us Tempest. Erling's got a gift for us. Shania's is almost worthy when I spend a day and a night listening to the stories that the guests of my workshop bring to share. I decided to sort these stories and put them in two baskets. One for stories from local peasants and hunters and another for stories of travelers from faraway lands. Surprise I was to see that the first basket stays empty all the time while the other is almost full. While I was thinking about it, I took a walk in the forest and I meant to jump over the forest stream, but being is how I mine... My mind was all distracted by my great basket mystery. I accidentally jumped too high and into the upper branches of a tall oak. And there they were, the stories that had been stolen from the first basket all hidden in a magpie nest. Sitting on the oak branches, I asked the magpies why they stole from the basket of local stories and never touched the other. And the magpies told me that the lo they love everything that's shiny and bright. And what could be shinier and brighter than your fellow neighbors discussing how they went to the stream to wash their clothes or repaired their fence three years ago? Surely not the dusty stories of weary travelers. Ask yourself, O oh worthy one, why I told you this story. And this is your answer. I have reforged the story into the gift which I present you now, the avalanche. Okay. Well, that certainly was a story. What is the avalanche? The unmaking. What do we have here? Let's go date from newest to oldest. What is this? Avalanche. It's a sling staff. Okay. Plus two morale bonus to damage and an ability to cast stone call once per day. Okay. That's interesting. And then added armor. Anything else really super interesting? No. What else did we get? And we got Tempest. Shock, speed, great axe, grants us wheeler the ability to cast remove paralysis. Oh, fun. Okay. Well then, let's get everybody set up here. For their projects that they're going to do. So population census is an opportunity. Problem, streams of power. Okay, Octavia, handle it. You got it. no chance of making it happen, so don't worry about it. I'm just going to send you out there. These are all opportunities. Okay. Not going to rank anybody up. Trade agreement. 10 BP per work, but reduces income by one for each rank of stability and espionage below 10. Oh, okay. Well, then we should wait a while to do that one. Okay. So, every ranking up, everybody should now take what? Seven? Yes. Good. Okay. Good. Well, we have people working on things. The Defaced Sisters, and we have Tristian, and you're doing Praise Sisyphus. Okay. Armag. Vordekai, you're busy. Busy, so there's nothing else we can really put you guys on. Strengthen. This is going to cost 20 days to solve, so this won't be an immediate thing. Okay. 
Strength and Storytellers, 20 days to solve. We can put you on that. Okay. There we go. We'll make a save and then we'll move on. All right, let's go to Bald Top and then let's go take Haddam with us. We're going to take Tristan with us to Bald Top. We'll swing by and we'll give, grab Haddam to go see about the, the dwarves. So Bald Top is right here. All right, let's go. Bald Top once again. We are cursed. Let's buff. We are buff. Let's go do this thing. No, oh, no. There's nothing going on here. Oh, bummer. We're here too early, it seems. Okay. Well, then. That's too bad. Spent all that time buffing for nothing. <laughs> How long do we have to go for this thing then? What's it say? 19 days. So we have to be there in like four more days. Okay. Let's go to here then. Swap out our bad boy. Throne room it. All right, my friend, come over here. We're going to do this. We're going to leave. We're going to take him. Grab him. Let's go take on some dwarves, shall we? Dwarves. What kind of trouble have they got themselves into now? Teleport to the north. Gnarl marches. Timber's rest. Because this thing is the Lost Warren Fortress right there, nine hours away. Lost Dwarven Fortress. Hmm. Okay, can we rest here? Cannot rest here. We're going to rest outside so that we can get all of our elixirs and things back. Let's manage you over here. We have succulent sausages for one extra temporary hit point. Cameberry pie or fast healing plus one per day. And still, how do great empires decay? How does their fall begin? This is a mystery worthy of a great mind. In the north, every fool knows the answer. The end is near when a great chief who has conquered all the neighboring tribes starts to eat more than hunt and sleep more than fight. <laughs> It's a pretty good way of looking at it. Excellent caneberry pie. Mmm, yummy. Alright, we're gonna buff up and wander in here. See what the hell is going on. Alright, my friends. Let's wander our way in here. What's going on? What's going on here, Rudrin? Down there, please help him. Okay. We've down better ones. Get out, all of you. Well. Ah, uh, let's do this then. I don't know. What do you want to do here, darling? What do you have? Wand of call lightning, wand of haste. One of Greece, one of heroism. I uh, just shoot him. You deserved it. Okay. Wait for this thing to run up on you. Oh, he did hit me. What did he have? To, he he only had to roll a two to hit me. He's got 43 attack modifiers. Wow. Base attack bonus of 30. Okay, hold on. Base attack bonus of 30. Wow. Now you fall down. I'm going to wait 
you need to wait. Go up here, hit him first. Tear them apart. There we go. That was crunchy. Give him this. Okay. And he's dead. Yeah, when he's got a 30 BAB, man, I mean, he's going to hit you. Damn. That was something else. It's like, I don't care what your AC is. I guess we'll want to make sure that we have displacement on us then. Do I have a displacement wand? That's the question. Do I have a displacement wand? Wand of shield, wand of echolocation, wand of displacement. I do. Okay, let's make sure that these are in publicly accessible places here. This is the wand of echolocation. This is the wand of displacement. Rod of the fearless. I can quicken spells. Okay. What I'd like to do is put, like, here's the wand of the shield. Echolocation. Let's move all this stuff up. And the wand of displacement. Okay. So, my little friends, I guess we're meant to go this way. What do you got for me, friends? Bunch of them. Golems. Okay. See golems. See ruins. And I see a dwarf. Beyond the open gate, you find a strange room that looks more like a workshop than the entrance to a fortress. Across the room, by the far wall, there's a metal throne. In front of it is Jarmold Skeggy, who you know well. In one hand, he holds a steel scepter, and in the other, a sacred symbol of Torag, inset with a shimmering jewel, which you recognize as the heart of the adamantine golem. The paladin is pale, and he barely opens his mouth. You're here. Help me overcome these golems. I took the scepter from the empty throne over there, but it seems my command over the golems is lacking. If I lose control over the golems, we all die. I told you it would end like this, Harem says. That you were dying for a legacy. What is it, that legacy worth? An army of golems? Was it worth it to come all this way just to meet your death? Wouldn't it have been easier to choke to death in your mountains at home? One of the golems turns its metal face to you and speaks in harmony. You all deserve to die, thieves and imposters. By what right do you come to this fortress? This is the Skaggy clan. They were the rightful heirs of the builders of this fortress. They are not Skaggy. They are nameless cowards. Only I, Offeld Skaggy, am worthy of bearing this clan's name. Offeld? But you're my great-great-uncle. When our clan left this fortress, you and your golem stayed behind and protected. Come to your senses, ghost. We are your descendants. You are no one. The real Skeggy would never abandon their creation. Those who left forever lost the right to bear this proud name. And you have the nerve to come here to this fortress, which was built from the blood and sweat of your grandparents and abandoned by your unworthy fathers. Ha! You will die here together with all your henchmen. Golems, attack. Grinding his teeth, Jarmold lifts the steel scepter above his head. I'm doing everything I can, but his will is too strong. Destroy the golems. Hadam, you must unmake his throne. I owe you nothing. Neither you nor Torag. Yes, Jubala says. This is the perfect time to argue about theology. The adamantine golem. The gate behind you closes with a clanging sound. You will die. All of you will die. <laughs> well, okay. Does it matter? Uh, we probably can't mez them. Any last wishes? They're level 30. Mm -hmm. Immunities. Fear, compulsion, poison, charm, stun, death, ability score damage, sleep, paralyzed, frighten, stun you. Yeah, okay. Um... In that case, darling, haste us and then light us up. Let's see about getting you as close to this as we can. Boink. Okay. Right there. 
works. Can you toss a few over here? Knock him over. There we go. That's what I want to see. Okay, I am going to run up to here. And then I'm just going to wand of displacement on me, myself. There we go. Make him a little harder to hit. You are going to run up here. Let's see. Can you launch? Yeah. How far away can you launch this? There you go. Okay. You're going to come over here. Okay. Critical hit. 141. Wow. All right. Can you just run in here and maybe finish this guy off? Great. That helps. Oh, and he missed because he rolled a one. Oh, he's going to nail me. Okay. I don't suppose you can hold monster on any of these turkeys, can you? No. Adamantine golems can't be held. They can't be paralyzed. Okay. We knew that. Um... Overwhelming grief, I'm sure, doesn't affect them. Because it said what? Emotions? They're immune to emotions. They got 15 damage reduction. Stun, death, ability score, damage, drain, spell immunity, compulsion, poison, frighten, stun, sleep, paralyzed. It doesn't say anything about this. Can you hit him with overwhelming grief? Immune to overwhelming grief. Okay. Mm -hmm. In that case, darling, we won't use that. Uh, your job is going to be to do the same thing then. Put him on the ground. Good job. My man. Okay. I really need you to wait until they get a chance to go. Can you put some skeletons on this guy? Okay, that's not what I had in mind. Okay. You can hit this guy. Or you can do multiple attack on him for four. Let's do attack him. Who knows? You might be able to finish him off. Not if you're missing, but that works. Okay. You can hit this guy. And then you're close enough for me. If I crit, you're going to add to it, so... Okay, that guy's down. Critical hit. There we go. Amiri, let's see. Let's everybody wait for this thing to run up here and attack me. That thing's going to mirror image itself. That's useful. Okay, now we can all run up on this thing. You, my friend... Hmm. You can get behind him. I was hoping to launch Touch of Chaos on him, but I can't get there in time. Let's run over here. What the hell? Now's the time to true strike. If you're if we don't kill him on the first turn, then we'll kill him a little later. Okay, strike him. There we go. Ooh, he went after her. Well, then, what is this? Good hope? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't really need that. There's nothing that you can do, sister. Not against this guy. I mean, we could try to grease him, but I don't really see a point, so just stay there. Jubilast, I want you to try to put him on the ground first. There we go. You're going to run over here. Vital strike him. Nice. That's what we like. Hey. Crit him. Here comes our ghost. Vandals. Have you any idea how much time I spent creating them? 
jar mold, Skeggy says. The, pal the paladin's pale face glistens with sweat. His fingers tremble, but with what's left of his strength, he clenches his steel scepter and toric symbol with his shimmering jewel. Quick, Adam, unmake the throne. Don't do this, Offeld says. Don't you see? He's an imposter. He has no right to this fortress. It's mine. Mine. Let's make peace. Take the scepter from him and I will repay you generously. Harem looks at the paladin, then at the ghost and back, then turns to you with a bitter sneer. Look at them, children of Torag, butting heads like two rams on a narrow mountain path. We do not need to decide something, though these two are equally disgusting. Whose side should we take? Who are you, ghost, and what are you doing here? My name, as I mentioned, is Alfeld Skegi. I was once a famous master. The golems I made were unrivaled either here in the Stolen Lands or in our homeland, the Five Kings Mountains. I created this throne and scepter to control a whole army of golems, ordering them to make more and more new ones. Yes, it was a glorious time. Then my fellows, worms and lice, unworthy of even wearing beards, let alone the glorious name of Skeggy, betrayed everything we lived for. They decided to abandon the road abandon the fortress and return home with those Waradash cowards and the Langbuk morons. They even had the nerve to accuse me of betrayal. They spread rumors that my experiments had emptied the treasury. What a ridiculous excuse. A true dwarf will find his own way, even without gold. He would sooner eat stones than give up his life's work. So I stayed. The last true Skeggy, the last shield on the road of shields. I had my golems to help protect the fortress. Perfect creatures of stone and metal, not like those cowards with stew inside of spines instead of spines. I remained here and continued to guard the fortress even as my flesh decayed until there was nothing left of me but bones and adamantine will. Listen to me. I see you're no ordinary folk. Perhaps... Probably in the service of some rich merchant, or maybe even the local ruler. We don't need to be enemies. Let me keep guarding this fortress. In return, I'll give my best golems to serve your lord. Well, you've already broken the best ones, but I'll make new ones. Help draw mold and unmake the throne. It's a neutral good response. Well, yeah... Hmm, okay. Sure. Chaotic neutral. You don't have to decide anything. You don't have to be on anyone's side. <laughs> yeah, unmake the throne. This ghost is nuts. Unmake him. With your magic unmaking power. That's a pretty good effect there with all the dust. Fine, all right. But it's the last time I'm helping you understand. Harem approaches the throne with the skeleton and strikes it with his fist. One blow, two, and three, and the throne crumbles into pieces with a clanging sound revealing another jewel, shimmering purple. Thank you, Jarmold says. Baldin was beginning a speech, but Harem interrupts him. You are welcome. You are welcome. Now go back where you came from. You try to make something useful from the pieces. Jarmold lowers his head. As you say... Your Highness, the Skeggy Clan thanks you. We all are in your debt. I'm afraid we'll have to forget the treasures of our ancestors and return home in disgrace. Farewell. Harem watches the paladin coldly. So much effort, so much suffering. And for what? They built themselves a crypt and nearly buried themselves in it. Torag, you inspire your children to build such things. And then they don't know how to get rid of them. Fools. All right, let's go. There's no point standing here. Well, then, the unmaking. Look within. Decide the fate of the fortress. There's this, a dwarven Ugrash. Flaming burst adamantine. Fun. Okay. Any other lootage around here? Doubtful. This place is just a ruin, isn't it? Now, did we pick up? We gain experience. It said there was some kind of purple gem. 
Did we pick something up? Did we pick anything up? Let's go back to here and go to date from newest to oldest. We got this and this and this, and we got this. Flaming burst adamantine dwarf in Ugarash. Is it a is it a reach weapon? Two-handed, exotic. It doesn't say it's a reach weapon though. It looks like it should be a reach weapon, but it's not. Because let's see, what do you got? You got this and it says slashing enhanced fire, critical melee, flaming damage, two-handed glaive. Oh, it says six foot melee. What's this say? This doesn't say that on there. It says two foot melee. Wow, really? The Ugarash looks like it should be a reach weapon. Oh, well. It's not. Okay, my friends. Off we go then. We got our fast healing for a day. That's kind of nice. That's helping us get out of this hole that we got dug from getting hit by these golems. Fun. I'm glad we... We picked that meal. <laughs> that ended up being appropriate. <laughs> you can save me a couple of potions that way. All right. Hadam exits the dungeon without looking back. His face bears a strange expression, a pensive half smile. You know, Jadix, I think I've just realized something. Something very, very important. But I need to ponder it further. Let's talk about this later after we return to the capital. Okay. My man... I will talk to you at the capital. In the meantime, let's get out of here. Well, that was interesting. Uh, that just might be an appropriate end to this episode. Dealing with the dwarves and their adamantine golems. Folks, it's been entertaining. We're going to try and get back to... I guess let's go back home here, back to Tusdale. Where is my city? Right there. It's been a day for our intrepid adventurers. To the throne room. Oh, and then Irulene. We need to see Irulene. We'll see her at the end of the episode. That's what we'll do. Let's go outside real quick. The main square and go talk to her because she supposedly has something for us. Dwarven, flaming, adamantine, ugrash. Nobody's going to know how to use that weapon. Jadex. Go over here, buddy, to the horses. Run, you fiend. What do you got for me? Greetings, your highness. You've come to fetch your order, right? So here's the thing. I sent the gemstones to my partner as we agreed. Now it turns out it's not enough. He wants something else from the stolen lands. You see, magic artifact gatherers need extremely rare ingredients at times, such as a unicorn's horn. These animals are rare. They don't come along very often, and many people consider killing them for their horns to be pretty bad because of their intelligence. You're not someone to be stopped by petty superstition, are you? Mm. Oh, well, where can I find the unicorn? I already have the horn, darn it. Neutral evil action. So nice doing business with you. Regarding the unicorn's whereabouts, try tracking one down on the road. Here's the unicorn horn. I hope your partner can be trusted to carry out this part of the deal. Oh my. I never hoped to hold such a rarity in my hands. Thank you, your highness. I'm sure we can make it this time. I'll keep you abreast of our progress. Okay. Neutral evil, eh? Hmm. Special request. Let's see what she can build for us, shall we? I don't think I've ever had her build that thing before because I've always said, no, I'm not going to go kill a uni unicorn for you. But we did this time with that. I don't think it altered our allegiance very much because we're still lawful good <laughs> by a long ways. Made a lot of the right choices here. Let's find Haddam. Where is he? Where's our short little stubby pal? Uh, can, can I look up here? Where is Haddam? He's right here in the middle. Okay. He's obscured by the fire. It's over. Yes, I thought I was free of my past burdens when I accepted Grotus' truth into my heart. But it is only now that I have become truly free. You know, Jadix, I used to hate them all so much. The dwarves who ousted me, the god who rejected me. And now I look upon this. 
and I barely remember their hatred. How pathetic they are with their pride and their stubbornness, building their toys to die among them, powerless to unmake the things they've made. I'd laugh, but in fact it makes me want to cry. But on the other hand, I thought, how should I put it? Aram wraps his beard around his fist. My gift, wherever it came from, the gift to destroy, to help others create. Perhaps my God does something similar. Everything that has a beginning has an end as well. One day Grotus will be free and destroy this world. But imagine what will happen then, after the end. Perhaps a new beginning, a new creation, and a new world. Who knows? Anyway, thank you, Jadix. Without you, I would have kept going in circles while resentment and hatred gnawed at me from the inside. You helped me find peace, and I swear by Grotus I won't leave your side until it's our turn to crumble to dust. Well, good. Hmm. Well, it's good that we helped that paladin. It was an act of kindness. No, I like this answer better. Lawful neutral. Well, let's go for lawful good. Good, bad. They were driven by greed and pride. Truth be told, the two didn't differ much. Both true children of the Skaggy clan and true followers of Torag. There's nothing to be proud of here. I care not who won the fortress. What draws my mind are thoughts of my place in the world and the true meaning of serving Grotus. Destroying, creating something new from the pieces and destroying it again. Isn't that what you're doing now here in the Stolen Lands? You have built your kingdom upon the ashes of countless predecessors. Ponder this when you have the time. Well, believe me, buddy, I'm pondering it. And I guess that's what I'm going to do to leave this episode is to say that one of the main key differences that I like between that it makes me like Kingmaker over Wrath of the Righteous is I really like the story of the main antagonist. I really like Nerissa's story, which is, you know, she she overreached, angered a god, the Lantern King, essentially, or you might want to think of him as a demigod or whatever. But she angered a being with superior power to her. And as penance, it asked her then to... to make a thousand kingdoms crumble to destroy a thousand kingdoms and bring me those tears as an offering of an apology that's his that's his way of getting her to give him an apology and that sort of punishment is actually it's really old school punishment and it and it tends to work really well <laughs> it's like oh so you snatched a cookie well guess what now you have to eat the whole entire container of cookies and by the time you get done you're sick and puking and you barf it all up and you never want to eat another cookie again uh it's that kind of punishment so i like that because it creates layers among nyrissa as an as an antagonist you know her ambition and her sorrow and her regret and all that stuff that as she goes along and then and then having to come up with this apology she's forced to do this horrible thing over and over and over again and so she has to embody that hatred within her to make it happen you know she's got to make the stag lord rise and then fall she's got to make your kingdom rise and fall etc 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 Megar Varn's kingdom in Varnhold rise and fall she's got to keep doing this and doing this and doing this and now your kingdom is the last one she needs uh, as as a as a story device as a plot device and as an antagonist's driving force in the narrative, I really like it. I think it's probably one of the more creative Dungeons & Dragons style stories that I've seen. I think it's more creative than Irenicus and Bodhi in Baldur's Gate 2, despite how much I love Baldur's Gate 2. Um, I certainly, and I like it a lot more than Wrath of the Righteous's world wound and, and dealing with the architect. I just find the architect and her her... Her motivation is so, it's such a trope. It's been played out so many tired times that I'm just, I don't care. Like when I found out that that's what it was all about, I was like, oh, brother, really? So this to me is really creative because I don't think I've ever seen anything like this where it's been like, you will give me an apology and the apology is going to be, you will create a thousand kingdoms and destroy them. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. This game would be a top, tier game with a couple of really small modifications like this would probably be my favorite or maybe second favorite 
CRPG of all time with a couple of tiny modifications. It's hard to beat Baldur's Gate 3 now. I mean, that's awesome. But this would be right up there for me if there were a couple of small changes. One of them would be, I would love to have a timer on all the chapters. I would like to have a chapter timer that lets you know, not just the ancient curse, but lets you know this chapter has this many days. This is how long you have to get everything done. I would really like to see the development that comes up that halves the amount of time it takes to do upgrades. Instead of requiring 40 upgrades, I think that should happen at about 20 upgrades. You should get that much, much sooner. And if they want to throw in a second one that halves it from seven days down to three at 40, that would be great because there's just not enough time in the game to do everything. And that's a real disappointment. Uh, I think that would be better. And then the other thing is just the DC checks of all the different things that go on in the kingdom. The, the power curve for those is too steep. If you fixed those things that had to do with the kingdom management, this would be one of the greatest games of all time. And I wish I knew how to mod it because I would make those mods myself. They'd be so awesome. Anyway, folks, that's where I'm going to leave it today. I, the, the part of the game that I enjoy so much, and, and this is why I like Baldur's Gate 3, and this is why I like Baldur's Gate 2, it really comes down to two things for me most of the time. Combat and characters, your companions. And I like these companions. I wish I could use more of them because like we haven't even used Knock Knock and I love him. Um, but Ekendeo is a good character for the way he's built. I just don't tend to use Rangers. I love Octavian and, and Rigangar as your, as your swinger couple. They're great. Even Jathal, Undead, um, she's cool. I, I don't like Tristan's betrayal, but it's a good story device. Um, I love Valerie. Amiri's fun. Jubilost is Jubilost, and, and he fits, you know. He's different from everybody else, and he's got that smugness to him, that smug superiority. And it works because I generally hate gnomes in all games, and I like him. Um, I like Lindsay because bards are powerful in this thing. I mean, the only character I really don't like is Hedrum because he's grumpy and because I'm tired of seeing grumpy cleric like that is a trope that has just been used way too many times. Grumpy cleric. Oh, come on. Stop it. Uh, so this is and Valerie being a paladin who's not a paladin is actually a really, really cool way of handling it. I only wish that she would have started out as a two handed fighter and not as a tower shield specialist uh, because that's that's a shame that you have to use a respect mod to get her into a more reasonable situation because she's really designed with her high charisma score and everything. She really works well as it. She's, she's basically set up to be a dreadful carnage paladin, you know? And I love, I love her whole thing. Like she will not put up with the political BS of the paladins and the, and the, those people and their attitudes and all that stuff. She's like, no, you, you're good by the deeds that you do. So anyway, that's why I like this game is because of the characters. And that's why I dislike Kingmaker. That's why I like it less, way less, actually, because the characters are just, just awful. Um, there's too many, there's too many evil, unredeemable characters like Camilla and Daren, and it's just like, oh my god, I don't like any of you, and I don't want any of you in my party. You're all awful. But this game, this game is the one I keep coming back to. It took me a long time to warm up to it, a long time to to get to the point where I was comfortable enough with the kingdom management to say, I can put up with this in order to do all the rest of it. That's fun. Um, and th that's the only other thing that I, that I wish was, could be fixed is with a mod is that I don't like losing advisors because you need them. I don't like that part, but otherwise, I mean, it's just, it's still a fantastic game. So everybody, thanks for watching. As always, leave questions, comments down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know how your own playthrough go, are going. And I will see you next time. Until then, happy gaming, everyone.